Hey everybody. Well, I'm deciding on uh, what next, what series I'm gonna do next. Uh, I want to do a little number theory problem today that I just found. Um, and we are, it is a Diophantine equation, which means that we have some equation, usually in, t in multivariables, that the solutions must be integers. So x and y here represent integers. And so we have sort of this wacky term over here, and we have x minus y cubed, which I guess we see pretty often, but um, there's nothing I really see that's immediate, no substitutions, nothing uh, really interesting, except to sort of multiply this out. So after we do that, we get x cubed plus x squared plus y squared plus xy plus y cubed. Here it sort of looks like we might be able to substitute xy. We'll see. Let's uh, also expand the the right hand side, and we get and uh, we get this expression just using the binomial theorem. Uh, right away, our x cubed terms cancel, and we notice that those were the only terms in our equation that had no y factors. Uh, and the I guess the opposite of that statement is every term here now has a factor of y. So y is equal to zero will produce infinitely many um, solutions. So for every integer x, y equals zero is a solution. We see that if we plug that in here, we just have x squared times x equals x cubed, which is true. Now, so we can divide out by y if we assume that y is not equal to zero from here on out. And what we get is uh, something quadratic in y, so I'm going to write it like that. Uh, we get, and so we get 2y squared plus x squared minus 3x tim times y plus 3x squared plus x. So like I said, this is a quadratic in y, and I've written it like that to sort of show that. And whenever we have what we call quadratic Diophantine equations, a useful trick is often to consider the quadratic formula because we have, and specifically the discriminant, because the discriminant has to be a perfect square in order for the, the solution to be an integer. Like that is the bottom line because we can't have something, something, but plus square root of five in it, right? It has to be the discriminant which is b, the middle coefficient b squared minus 4ac, which I'll compute in a little bit, must be a perfect square in order for you to have an integer solution. Now, just because you have, um, just because you have a perfect square uh, discriminant doesn't mean you'll have an integer solution, but if you have an integer solution, then you have a perfect square discriminant. So, the discriminant is this middle term squared minus the pr 4 times the product of these two terms. And so if we you know, write that out and expand it, we get, and we get uh, this polynomial, fourth degree polynomial on x. And this has to be equal to some integer squared. So we want to, I don't know, get a better grip on this polynomial. It's kind of arbitrary. 6, 15, 8. I don't really see the connection here. Uh, we notice that it is indeed divisible by x, so we can at least factor out an x out. And whenever you have sort of equations and you know you're going to have integer solutions, or at least you have integer coefficients, at least try to plug in some small integer values and see if you get uh, if you get a zero. And so if you do that, you will find pretty quickly, if you just test small numbers, that x is equal to negative one is also a solution to this equation, or it is a zero of the polynomial, because what I'm doing is factoring here. It's actually a, a zero of multiplicity two, meaning that we can factor out x plus one twice and the remaining term is x minus 8. So here we have that some integer squared is equal to this new factored thing. And we know that x is an integer, so all of these are integers.
what we can do now is since we have a squared term we can sort of just ignore that right because this will just be some integer that we're multiplying by um, and, and yeah so what we need is that we need I'll say a new variable k and we need k squared to equal x times x minus 8 and what we can actually do here is uh, complete the square and what we get is x minus 4 squared minus 16 is equal to k squared and at first this doesn't look too eh like I mean you know we, we have a parabola if we were mat if we were plotting x and k but aside from that we don't really see anything here hmm well 16 is a perfect square um, and we're claiming that that x minus 4 squared is perf perfect square because x is an integer and since k is an integer we have this as a perfect square so we have three perfect squares here and when I think three perfect squares I think Pythagorean triples and I think I don't want the 16 on this side I want the 16 on this side and what we get is that k squared plus 4 squared equals x minus 4 squared and so we have a Pythagorean triple and we know one of the legs one of the legs of this triangle is 4 so we have some right triangle with a leg of 4 and it has integer lengths and it turns out that the only solution to this is the 3 4 5 triangle and that's not hard to prove if you um, if you move actually the, the, the legitimate way to to solve this would be to move the k squared to this side and then factor and then use the factors of 16 to actually get something but since we have a Pythagorean triple here we can actually see that 3 4 5 is the only well non-degenerate case so there's actually another case if k were equal to 0 because then we wouldn't have a triangle but we could have 4 squared equals 4 squared so or negative 4 squared so basically we have that our hypotenuse is either 5 so this could either equal 25 or this could equal 16 in the non-degenerate or er, 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 sorry in the degenerate case where k equals 0 and so we just have an absolute value equation because if we take the square root we'll get an absolute value that will lead to four solutions and that is negative one zero eight and nine uh... our x equals zero case here uh... will ultimately lead to y equal equaling zero so we can discard this as one of our solutions that we found because we already had it in here and so our our x's are now negative 1, 8, and 9 but then we have to test um, whether these solutions because I said like I said even if we have a perfect square discriminant it doesn't mean that we will have an integer solution but it turns out that uh, all of these cases lead to perfectly good solutions and they are and that is y sorry y equals if x is negative 1 then we get negative 1 if x is 8 then we get negative 10 and if x is 9 we actually get two solutions the only reason why we got one solution here for each of these cases is because it made the discriminant equal to 0 the discriminant is zero, then you only have one. Uh, then you have basically multiple roots. But here the discriminant is non-zero, and we get that uh, that y can be negative six or negative twenty-one. So along with the case y equals zero and x is any integer, we also have four additional cases. And uh, these are the only solutions to this Diophantine equation. So anyway. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video series. Bye.